Hi everyone, Stefan Rabanovic, Go With The Flow, a global watercolour conversation. We're back with group three and today, today we're, we've got a great group of uh, Australian artists here uh, in um, uh, Chandisanaika, John Orlando Burt and Richard Tejun Chow. Mike Kowalski uh, is also with us, I think he's just uh, popped out for a tick but he should join us shortly. And uh, today, today it's really wanting to talk, we're wanting to talk a little bit more about this exciting medium of watercolour. Um, who better to take, uh, who better to talk about that than the, the, the guests that we have with us at the moment? We'll, um, we don't have any particular order to, to start with, but I think we can really, um, how about we start off with John. John, if you're happy to um, kick us off for this yeah. session, please, yeah. Um, yeah, let's talk about what. What what motivates you? What 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 you're on? What you're working on? Okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll just start with a bit of history about Please. myself. Yes. I um, I started uh, in industrial design uh, many many years ago now, and worked in the car industry, uh, and I had quite a career with that for many many years, about twenty years. Yeah. And uh, what I was doing there was drawing, and what I've always loved to do is to draw. And I have ever since I was a little kid. And so working in industrial design, I traveled the world uh, designing cars. Um, I worked for a long time in America, uh, traveled to Japan and lived there for two years. And <clears throat> then I finished up in Europe. Um, and I worked in Europe for quite a while. I think... Uh, well, while I was travelling, many you know through those years, I painted, and I've always painted, always drawn, always painted. So I used to always travel with a sketchbook, and it's always been part of my life and my artistic expression. Great. Um, I'll just show you a painting of mine in the background there, a big oil that I did many years ago, and you can see that uh, where my heart rests <laughs> I've right. always had a, a mad obsession with cars and aeroplanes and uh, anything mechanical um, there became a point in my life where I decided to give away my uh, career and designing cars and so then I took up painting full time and I I did that about 30 years ago and became a full-time artist, uh, primarily painting in watercolour. Uh, I did some oils and still do. Um, so I've always loved to travel and I guess I would describe myself as uh, a plein air painter, primarily. I love to um, paint outdoors, uh, I love to travel. And I have done and travelled a lot, been to, in fact, I've been to Venice 24 times over my <laughs> painting career so far. And um, uh, there's nothing like sort of getting out and in the field and painting, which I do a lot around Australia too, here in Victoria, um, go out to, to the Yarra Valley and up around Marysville, Alexandra, for instance. Now, um, just a little bit about my other ex exhibition history. I've had about 27 uh, solo exhibitions. Uh, three of those solo exhibitions I've had in Venice in Italy uh, and one mm -hmm. lot here in Melbourne, uh, Sydney, Adelaide and uh, many other areas around, or well, mainly around Australia. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about my painting um, and what's important to me. Um, I mean, I love to draw. Uh, I've always loved drawing. And I always take my sketch pads with me, as you can see. Wow. And oh. my sketches. Fabulous. And, you know, these are gorgeous. Thanks. on my travels and you can see that a lot of my sketching is tonal and to me that's a really really fundamental part of painting um, 
number one is the drawing, of course, drawing and composition. But to get the tones in a painting right and get the tones in the right place yeah. is a, a very, very important thing. Um, so I have a mountains of sketchbooks that I've collected over the years, of course. Um, now, I use those sketches and they do create a, a foundation for what I do in my studio um, and I refer back to them a lot and with photographs, of course, mm. as well, like we all do, but I get my a lot of my inspiration from my sketchbooks. Uh, a question, yeah. if I'm... A question if I may. So does that mean that, uh, for example, with your uh, with your tonal sketches and paintings, does that then mean that you uh, are, are much freer to then select how you introduce colours when you come back to the studio? Because if you're working in a simple, you know, in single tones, mm -hmm. it does. Um, a, a lot of the colours that I use, I'll just show you. You know, one little sketch here probably shows I. I use a very limited palette in my paintings. Mm -hmm. if, you, you know, if you look on my website, you'll see my work. But yeah. uh, it, it, it um, well, I, I use a lot of really light transparent colours to start with in a painting, uh, okay. just to capture the light. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that's probably um, the most, well, it is the most important thing for me. I mean, I was... The, the subjects are always important, but the most important thing in a painting for me is the light. Great. Um, the yeah, subject yeah. sort of takes a back seat to a certain extent, yeah. <laughs> and the light is the most important thing. You can even see in my painting uh, behind that car, mm, mm. Uh, the Jaguar. I mean, it, light on the sheet metal, it really makes that painting, and it's always, if you're painting, for instance, I've painted in Venice, uh, it's the light on the buildings, light on the water, reflections and things like that, but it's primarily, primarily the light. That's great, that's great. Okay. I'll, um... and, that, and that holds true for all watercolour, doesn't go. it? It's about the light, you know, I guess watercolour art to see that light. And yeah. You know, you can be standing anywhere and suddenly this light beams through. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know. it is the most important thing. And even, you know, when I do oil paintings, I try to capture that, uh, light even in my oil paintings but I think to me watercolour is the best medium without mm. a doubt to capture light because of its transparency um, and it really translates and describes my art language the best and, and what I feel about the subject. Great. Yeah, thanks. Rob I'll leave, it, I'll, yeah, I'll leave it with you Rob, I just uh, you, you're back uh, Mike Kowalski is also back, so I'll leave, leave it with you and um, it will move to the next, I, I, I think. Thank, yep. thank you so much. I did have a technical issue there, but I'm back online and, and thank you for um, uh, carrying on without me. <laughs> All good, mate. Uh, and lovely to see you, folks. Chan, we might go down to you down in uh, Canberra if we can and welcome and thank you very much for joining this uh, amazing uh, telecast which is going around the world. Thank you for joining us. And, and how's Canberra and, and what's happening in your studio, Chan? Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thanks very much. And thanks to Stefan as well. It's, uh, it's been a privilege to be part of this, uh, this event. Uh, Canberra is going good. It's a little bit cold, as you know, <laughs> as usually is, but uh, now it's going well. Um, we're all sort of um, bracing the weather. It's the winter to come. But can I just give you a little bit of a shout out uh, just before, the, before we start? Uh, the previous group, uh, the the cream of Australian watercolorists, you know, they've been my heroes. You know, people like uh, Robert Wade, Joseph uh, Alvaro, Herman, Ross Patterson, David Taylor, um, you know, growing up, uh, learning watercolor from these guys, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and they are still my heroes and I still continue to, uh, you know, take, receive guidance from them and it's great to uh, see them and been, they've been a huge inspiration to my work. So, can uh, I jump in there and say, you know, and, and you you are following on in, you know, their footsteps, but their generosity in guiding us and so many watercolors around the world, um, it is through their generosity that we have such a strong watercolor, uh, not only in Australia, but throughout the world. And uh, 
you're following on that tradition as well, Chan. So we thank you for being very much in the fore of uh, willingness to share your skills. You know, we can all only share and enjoy. So thank you so much. Now, what about your work? How is it? What, what are you up to? Yeah, so uh, look, uh, my sort of work is, I like to sort of work on my own sort of uh, local environment. Um, sort of, I, one of the reasons I live in Canberra is, uh, you know, we get four full seasons. We get really cold winters to hot summers, lovely spring and autumn sort of weather. So I like that change. I like I like when, when the environment actually changes, and that gives me different perspectives at uh, each stages of the of the year. So maybe what I thought is I might show you share some uh, paintings that I've been doing on my local environment and go through some of the some of the paintings if that's uh, that's okay. Fantastic. Thanks, Chan. We'd love to see them. Yep. So I'm going to show you a painting that I've done. This is uh, this is actually. Um, a painting that I've, I've done of uh, Marambiji River, which is only about 20 kilometers away from where I live. And this was an autumn morning that I went in and uh, it was just the light sort of coming in gently. And I just like the stillness of the, of, the, of the water. And I just wanted to capture that. And uh, so, you know, scenes like this is, is uh, quite abundant. Um, so, um, I don't know whether you can see my painting, can you? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's perfect, Jack. Absolutely. You can see the lovely yeah. glow of the uh, yellow reflecting in the water there. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so th that's that one. And uh, there is another painting that I've done. This is a, a sort of a, a country scene. This is about 20 minutes again from Canberra. Just, you know, that's one of the beauties of living in Canberra. It's <coughs> about 20 minutes drive, you're back into the country. Um, rural life and uh, you know these sort of farmyards. I really love this sort of scene. Um, obviously, there's simplification that needs to happen um, as as a painting because um, there's way too many details. So I sort of suppress the the background to sort of misty sort of scene. And this barn is where my eyes sort of wanted to to go. And there are a few design elements that are actually leading into that. Um, subject and also the mountain is actually converging uh, in the background to the um, to the to the barn or the hut. Um, the softness in the watercolour there, Chan, is just stunning that that drifting back into those hills, those Canberra mm. hills, uh, just beautiful. Oh thank you. Thank you, Bob. So the other thing um, that I paint is I have access to the snow um, which is um, which is really, um, you know, again, a one hour drive to the mountains. I can still see the, the mountain tops with uh, snow cover, um, you know, even this morning. So, this is a snow scene that I've done. Um, obviously, it's, it's becoming a, one of my favorite subjects. Um, that one of the things with snow, picking a snow subject, um, is what I find it's, it's actually not the snow that's more, most important. It is actually the, the, the darks. It is actually the darks that makes the snow white. So to get an mm -hmm. interesting pattern of dark is, is very important. Um, so the rest of it is, is really sort of, uh, sort of painting negatively and leaving that. I'll show you a actual plan, a preparation study that I do before this painting. So this is a quick little study that I've done of this painting just to see how it's going to work. Um, I, I do quite a lot of these, you know, uh, these are just sort of plans that I do um, just to see how things work out and sometimes they just stay on the paper, it doesn't actually get into the painting, but others get into it. So this one is actually the, just the plan for this uh, particular painting. Um, I guess uh, snow paintings, uh, I've done quite a few. Uh, there's another one again. Wow. Uh, Gorgeous. Um, so, so I like to actually add the Australian flavour to, to the snow scenes and the gum trees are part of our sort of landscape and I like to sort of um, go with what I see. In this case, there was a bit of light catching up on this trunk and on snow you actually get a lot of reflected light bouncing from the, the white snow and you see that sort of glow. Um, so that's, um, that's that one. And finally, maybe 
another snow scene. Um, this is this is another sort of thing. I just like these, you know, unorganized fallen logs. They make sort of great subjects. Um, and it's it's. I'll show you the actual photograph of this mm. um, this this subject. As you can tell on the screen, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? No, not not yet. We've just got a little portrait of your of your. There you go. Is that better? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So so this is what you, what I actually worked on, and uh, and if I switch back to the thing, you can see there's a lot of detail on the photo, but um, if I switch it back to the yeah to, to the photo, you can see. Mm. that I had to simplify the background quite a lot. Um, but also the edges have been blurred mm -hmm. to sort of get your eye back into the into the painting and that's mm. where the sort of focus is. Um, so snow scenes are, are my sort of favourite subjects. Yeah. Wow. Um, Chan, Chan, would you just like to talk about your palette because I think you've got a very interesting palette there, uh, you know, you, you, how you just yes. focus in on that log. Yeah, so um, I'll just uh, switch it to the palette. Um, so this is uh, my palette. Um, <coughs> as you can tell, what I've organized is a cooler side and a warmer side. Yeah. But uh, within, the, within the blues, I've actually got a warm blue to a cooler sort of a blue. And on the on the warm side, I go from a warm red to a cool red, and similar to the to the yellows. So uh, this is pretty much it's for a large mixing area, which is uh, you know it's great for sort of you know doing bigger washes. So I prefer that. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, and can I ask Chen if this, if you um, take this palette outside, is this your travelling palette? Do you, do you use that outside? Uh, yes, def uh, a bit of smaller ones for, for like uh, outside ones, uh, Rob. But, but this is just my studio palette that I actually keep. This is a bigger one. Great. Okay, thanks, Chen. Thank you very much for showing us those beautiful paintings. And um, uh, any shows coming up, Chen? Yeah, I've got an exhibition coming up. Uh, fortunately, the galleries are closed uh, at the moment. Um, so, you know... Uh, I'm trying to sort of uh, get a collection ready um, to sort of maybe exhibit uh, when the <coughs> restrictions are uh, mm -hmm. lifted. So hopefully Excellent. it'll happen at the end of the year. Excellent. And we certainly look forward to uh, catching up with that exhibition and, um, and uh, seeing your beautiful work. So thank you very much there. I can see Mike Kalowski online. Oh, morning, Mike. Mike. You might want to unmute your... You might want to unmute your... There you go. Mike, I'm you with fine, Rob. How are you? Very good. Mike and I have been out painting. We haven't been out to Williamstown for a while, but we shall try very soon when we uh, get ourselves organised again. Mike, um, I'll throw to you now about your watercolour world and how you're progressing with it. Uh, it's uh, it's going fine. Uh, always challenges, of course. And um, being that it's going into fall and winter here, uh, I'm move into more oil painting uh, when I go out to do my plein air work um, because standing yesterday, I actually did go out and do some watercolor uh, yesterday and <laughs> my feet just got soaking wet and um, and so uh, and it's, I just find when it gets cold, instead of getting frustrated with the watercolors, I'll choose oils to go out. But, um, but we've had nice days here um, the last couple of weeks, so I've been going outside and doing um, some plein air watercolor, which is my favorite thing to do. And your frustration there with watercolor, Mike, is the drying time? Uh, yeah, drying time. I mean, frustration is always a good thing, actually. Uh, it was really boring to go into the same temperature control situation every day and paint. Frustration. Being that it's going into fall and winter here. I'm sorry? Oh, we might have a bit of a technical thing, so keep going. Uh, so that, um, I do find that challenges are really good for uh, watercolor painting. So whether it's using a paper you haven't used before, 
whether it's painting in really high humidity that you're not used to, dry heat, moist conditions, they all teach you more about watercolor. Uh, oil is much easier because you just go on and that depends on, doesn't depend on the weather so much. I've painted in pouring rain and snow without any protection and you can do that with oil, but no mm -hmm. watercolor. Mm -hmm. um, but when you only have an hour, hour and a half to get out and paint, sometimes, especially when it's cold out, it, you, my the way I like to paint, my paintings uh, set up quick enough. So, um, mm -hmm. part of my problem. And are you going to show us, can we have a look at some of your work there, Mike? Or? Here's the one that I did yesterday. I'm sorry, I was all set up to do this, um, but I'm going to have to show you this way uh, or that way. That's, yeah. That's fine. So this is where it was yesterday. There are some beautiful willow trees um, out. I'm out at Mornington Peninsula. And um, this is afternoon sun, so probably around right. noon. Mike, can you just move it a bit to the right, your right? Uh, uh, other way, otherwise. left. Left, sorry. There you go, yep. All right. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, and uh, like Chan uh, was talking about, I really like to paint um, the locale that I'm, I'm in. Um, I think painting I, these days with travel and um, everybody can go and paint all over the world, and I do do that, but I really like painting um, where I live. Just, um, just a tad to the left, uh, Mike, if you can. Sorry, mate. Yeah, that's yeah. Now we're on a bit further. Yep. This is this is right up the street. Right. And I went up there um, about nine o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning. Wow. Some on there, uh, watercolor. Beautiful uh, light coming through those yeah, trees. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. So uh, I'm sequestered down here at the beach, which is a nice place to be. So uh, uh, had a lot of nice painting. There. So. Um, Anyway, so these are these are uh, yeah. my favorite my favorite painting type of painting is plein air painting. I do plenty of studio painting because I need to, but the paintings I'm most proud of are the ones that um, that get in my studio. And uh, and sometimes if I don't pay attention, I'll paint on the backs of my thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we will do that. Yeah. I, and that's the thing about watercolour, isn't it, Mike? It, it, we can get outside and enjoy the, the landscape because I think, like, you and I are both lovers of landscape, and just to get out there and be part of that world, watercolour allows us to get out there and, and feel the cold and feel the breeze and see the people and smell the cows, and it just allows us to get out there. You smell the cows, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you can you smell Uncle Jane. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just think it all, uh, painting outdoors, um, just, it, it, it throws curveballs at you all the time. And, and, um, and that's an American term. So there are no curveballs in cricket. So um, maybe there are. Uh, yeah. But it yeah, just clean. makes you a better painter to have to deal with changing light, um, smelly cows, cold feet. Um, cloud cover, all that stuff, and uh, for watercolor, <laughs> for me, watercolor really is a celebration of um, spontaneity. Um, everybody, watercolor is just a medium like everything else, so everybody uses it in a different way. To me, um, I appreciate a bit more spontaneous watercolor and being outside painting you just that's how you can't you can't sit and noodle away on something for five hours outside um <clears throat> anyway yeah mm -hmm. um, in terms of um what, what about exhibitions coming up mike anything in, in planning Do you... uh, um well there's a, a painting in italy that's going to be um at the Fabriano Museum, and that's postponed until I think August. And I have a local show here, the gallery in um, November, uh, down here in uh, Flinders. Yeah. So it's going to be. And, um, Mike had a great, great show at the end of last year, wasn't Mike at Hawth in Hawthorne? It was just fabulous. His work is great, and, and I look forward to the show down here then, Mike. So uh, that that is amazing, fantastic. Looking forward to it. All right. 
Um, Charlie, John, um, just going back to you for a moment, I missed, yep. are, you, are you out there exhibiting? Have you got any shows coming up? Uh, where can we see your work? Yeah, yeah, I have. I've got a show coming up uh, with the 20 Melbourne Painters um, in August this year. So Very prestige group, yep. Yeah, we have a meeting about that tomorrow, actually. So, you know, that's, that's coming up. So right. looking right. forward to being part of that. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Thanks, mate. It's lovely Thanks, to see you. Uh, now, yeah. I'll throw to Richard because Richard's going to lead us into the next session too. So, Richard, good morning in, from, from Sydney. Everything probably a sunny day in Sydney. Would you like to, to talk about your work? Thank you so much for joining okay. us. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, first of all, I think to thanks for uh, the whole uh, uh, show and and uh, Rob and uh, guys. It's a great opportunity to meet uh, most of you guys. Uh, actually, uh, I, I, I can't call myself a newcomer in Australia. Uh, I just moved to Australia for seven years. I uh, educated and worked for such a long time in China. Mm. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's pleased here to meet you. Uh, let's uh, uh, give a, a very uh, short self-introduction for you guys. Yeah, I was born in an uh, artistic family. My father and my grandfather uh, are artists. Uh, and I uh, started the oil painting in Xi'an Academy uh, of Fine Arts. That's a very famous uh, university in China. Uh, my, pre my previous uh, major in oil painting, when I moved to Australia, uh, uh, a chance, uh, I, I do some questions for, uh, for a book. Uh, I found the, what color media is, is, is very magical. Uh, it, it's something can achieve uh, maybe um, 9% uh, compared to oil planting. So uh, I spent uh, um, the six or seven uh, years uh, focused on uh, what, what color planting. Um, uh, for my uh, bit of uh, what color painting uh, is, is portraits. I'm very interested in to express the people, uh, especially in something uh, like the uh, culture, the religion, the experience behind them. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's something I, I'm very interested in. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, and uh, cause my uh, my major is uh, oil painting when I started uh, studied in university. So in my watercolor painting, I come up with um, uh, some um, uh, oil painting skills. Uh, I can uh, paint watercolor more rich, uh, more details, something like that. Uh, it's it's a uh, yeah it's a it's a whole picture it's almost a picture. <laughs> Richard, did you that? Can we have a look at some of your work? Is that possible? Oh, I see a beautiful sure. um, paintings behind you. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. This is my studio. My studio. Uh, let me uh, change the camera to the front camera. Uh, sorry. Well, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is a big one, about, about uh, almost uh, three meters. Uh, this is this is um, is a celebration of indigenous people. Wow! They pretend to stroke to celebration the immigrants to Australia uh, by sailing. Is that watercolor, um, Richard? Yeah. Wow, it's a big watercolor. Fantastic. Panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's it's watercolor. Yeah. Let me show the, the another uh, another piece is a uh, Indian old man. Yeah. I met this gentleman uh, in nineteen uh, uh, two thousand eighteen in mm -hmm. India. Uh, mm -hmm. He expressed me a lot, so I, I painted when I came back. Yes. It's another portrait. It's a street drama. He used mm -hmm. to be uh, performed in Circular Key uh, maybe six years 
a go. That's amazing. And uh, I'll show you something. Yeah, this is a big piece, about one meter and uh, 15 centimeters, something like that. I, yeah, I really uh, want to challenge some uh, something about what color. So uh, last year and this year, I focused on the, the big piece. This is uh, one of my rodeo uh, series. Wow. There's action here, Richard. Uh -huh. There's some lovely action there. Okay, thank you so much. It's yeah, a really uh, a wonderful moment. <laughs> yeah, this is a sick old man. This reference I took in Fabrano uh, 2018 in, in an Indian celebration in Italy. Fantastic. Um, this, uh, this is a Tibetan, Tibetan gold. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, um, I think this is the uh, first uh, what color portrait uh, I uh, how to say I picked uh, what color what color medium. Mm -hmm. um, Richard, have you got a show coming up at all? Uh, yes, yes, actually, uh, actually, I have, um, uh, follow it basically in Melbourne. The previous, uh, the previous plan is uh, uh, April, but because because of the pandemic, so uh, it changed the schedule. But yes. have no exact uh, have no exact uh, plan. Damn. Damn. And 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 Richard, if we wanted a single work, whereabouts would we see it in Sydney? Oh, sorry, I can't. I can't grab your picture. Oh, sorry. If we, if uh, viewers wanted to see your work, whereabouts would we see? It? Is, is, do you exhibit in Sydney? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. I cooperate with uh, a gallery. Uh, so uh, I have an annual exhibition in Sydney, and uh, yeah, and uh, as you, 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 you all say. Uh, my my studio is quite big. It's something like. Uh, <laughs> Come, you guys. If you have some, uh, some time, some some chance, we'll come to to my studio. Absolutely. And I, I, I will take some Chinese pizza money. Wow, that's pretty special. Uh, Richard, we we really um, we're loving seeing your gallery, but um, we're going to run out of time here. But uh, your portraits are absolutely stunning, and we thank you for showing us those. Your studio is amazing, and all of us are now slashing our wrists to try and work out how we can get the studio like yours. Uh, but thank you very much for showing. Thank, thank you, Max. Yeah. I'm amazed how clean it is. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's amazing. I'm just, I'm just coming back to John for a moment because um, I apologize for my late arrival. That was a technical hitch. I was left out in digital space there for a moment. But John, <laughs> um, and I missed your work. Have you got chances to show us a few more pieces which we might not have seen? Uh, well, I do, I can show you some of, just in my sketchbooks and what I've been working on, but I'm doing a larger painting of this at the moment, so a really big uh, watercolour that I'm working on, uh, and also I'm doing some big full sheet paintings at the moment, so not finished, not quite finished, but um, I'm... Like I said, getting ready for that uh, exhibition uh, in August. Um, so, um, but yeah, I, yeah, and the other thing I've been doing is a lot of life drawing lately, and um, I mean, doing a lot of oh, yeah. itching. And so that's been taking up my t <laughs> a lot of my my time, you know, during this uh, shutdown. So, oh, that's fantastic. We're just so lucky to have that watercolor. Um, I'm just going to fly back to Chan for a moment. Chan, is, um, we're running out of time. Are there any uh, closing paintings you'd like to show us? And I'm going to come to Mike in a second. Yeah, we, have, um, we have 10 minutes. That's okay. Keep, that's fine. Keep rolling, guys. 
Yeah, uh, thanks, Rob. Uh, maybe I might just show you because one of the parts of my painting process is plain air painting. Maybe I might share with you a few plain air Please. Uh, paintings that I, uh, I've done outdoor. So this is Murrumbidgee River, and I like to get out there and paint as much as I can. Um, you know, um, on location paintings, and I thought I might share this one. <laughs> and this dragged me to this uh, the, the white boat with the with the um, the so the so the lighter boat. But what happened was it actually moved away um, a few minutes later. So I had to paint it out of from memory. <laughs> Oh, you know, so these are things that we have right. to deal with when we're painting uh, plain air. Um, so, so that's actually the, the, the painting there. Um, yeah, um, probably uh, this is one from Echuca where I've actually done one in location. Your work is very clean, Chan. You, you, you know, you have a lovely transparency with that watercolour. Uh, thank you, thank you, Rob. Thanks very much. Yeah, so plain air is, is where my playground is. You know, I, I try to get out there as much as I can because when you're challenged, you, you learn more. And uh, I think that's the only way to sort of learn. Whereas in a studio, you sort of get into your comfort zone sometimes if it's a bit stale. So I always try to get out there as much as I can. Yeah, so it's just where, where it's that passion of the love of landscape and just getting out there. Um, thanks, Chan. And Mike, mm -hmm. if you, did you, could you show us a few more works? Sure. Um, one thing I've been doing uh, for <clears throat> uh, since we've been inside is doing a lot of uh, self-portraits. So um, these are things I do really quickly in front of a mirror, um, uh, trying to paint as quickly as I can, really. Um, I really enjoy it. Um, gives me gives me something to do. I never get tired of looking at myself. <laughs> uh, just I'm the cheapest model I know of. So uh, it's just it's really good practice to um, to do quick figure studies, and um, especially when the weather's not really good. Mm -hmm. um, so I enjoy doing that, and I can't get anybody else to sit for me for uh, more than a few minutes. But, so. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. great. Thanks, Mike, for that. Um, look, in the last closing minutes, I'd just like to sum up for those global viewers around us, around the world watching, um, that yes, there is a richness of watercolour down here, down under, the same as the rest of the world. Uh, we have some really good uh, societies and institutes down here. The Australian Watercolour Institute, I'll give a plug to, which represents a lot of the artists. We have a great uh, Queensland Watercolour Society, which is really worth belonging to. Down here in Victoria, um, I'm biased because I'm the president, but the Victorian Watercolour Society has is also. And if you come to Victoria, have a look at our website because we've got some, um, uh, on our website, we've suggested maybe five places to see. Uh, we've got five galleries to go to, five uh, art shops to find, so um, that's great. So look, viewers, thank you so much for watching. I thank, um, all my artists there today, from Richard, from John, Mike and Chan, I thank you very much for your generous um, offer of coming into your studio, so having a look at your work, we have appreciated. And let's go with the flow and stick with our watercolour, and I'll hand back to you, Stefan, in Brisbane. Thanks, 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 Rob. Thank you. No problem. Look, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, in this group, Group 3. Thanks for your time and your energy, uh, for coming and, and, and sharing all your work and your wisdom and just, you know, your, your experiences uh, in, in painting and life and, you know, just showing your studio, sharing your studios with us. Um, I'm sure that, um, that the viewers that we have around the globe are just hopefully just glued to the screen as they have been from the start i hope and they'll be continuing to to be glued to the screen to just take on uh take on all of the uh, little bits of information and trinkets that uh, are being shared for everyone here so again if i can thank um chan mike john and richard for coming along rob thanks again for hosting this one really appreciate um uh your your time and energy What's that? That was look. That it was an easier group to host than the last. Look, one. <laughs> they're they're all fabulous. They're all fabulous. They're all uniquely different, 
and I'm sure our viewers around the globe are enjoying these thoroughly. So I really appreciate your energy. And um, uh, like I've been saying from the beginning, you know, um, go with the flow. All the best. Thank you very much, gentlemen.